So I got my transmission here from the uh, Mercedes kit car that I'm gonna be taking on power tour. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys. But I brought it to Joe's because it ain't working right and we're gonna fix it. No, the band's after, the band goes on that part. Eh? Are you asking me or telling me? Figuring it out How for about myself. you just pay attention? Pay attention. <laughs> The problem I was having with the, the car was, it was fine when you were doing low speed shifting and stuff, it would still engage, but when you really tromped on it, you would feel the, the, the car slipping as it was trying to shift gears and it just wasn't grabbing as good as it should have. On the early style, on the early ones, they could, they could go either way. Uh, but okay. See all the splines at different lengths? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you put it in backwards, your converter won't go all the way. Okay. Well, there you go. Learn something new on a C cord. As you can see, we're here working on Blackjack's transmission today. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the valve housing off on these old uh, C4s. There was two different styles. On this one here, you've got one set of bolts that holds the valve housing and the pump in. On the earlier ones, there was two sets of holes, a separate set for the valve housing, one for the front pump. Oh, hard to get out. I always like knocking the front pump seal out before I take the pump out of the train. That way it's a little easier and you're not wrestling with the pump on the... Gotta roll it over. Now there's only a few pan bolts in this because we already had to pan off when we uh, drain the oil and put on a little shrapnel in there. Here's your valve body which we already took off because we wanted uh, with the issue that was in it we wanted to make sure the reverse pan wasn't broken but if you dip your finger inside the filter you'll see there's sediment in here it looks like clutch material or band material first we're going to take this front servo out this servo assembly operates this front band and that gives you second gear in the transmission <laughs> Inside this housing is your servo. There's two seals on this piston. An inner and an outer. Spring helps return it. This is your reverse servo. There's a couple bolts missing because it holds the cable for the shift. This is a molded piston, so the lip is part of the assembly. Now, if you remember when we did the Turbo 400 for the GTO, the pump is threaded, so you'd put your puller in there and you would walk it out on these forks. They don't do that, so you actually have to uh, get in behind and tap the pump out. Input shaft, front pump assembly. These are your little strut arms. One side goes on that uh, front servo piston, and then this side goes into your adjusting bin. There's your second gear band. As you can see, it's smoked. This is gonna go right in the garbage. That's your pl uh, front planetary. Obviously thrust washers on both sides of it. And then your sun gear and sun shell. Your sun shell locks your drum and then your sun gear propels from the front planetary to the rear planetary. And basically the same thing as the front band. You've got your your strut rods that go from the servo and then to the adjuster nut. Sitting on this rear planet cage, there's a snap ring in here that holds it on the output shaft. I gotta use my light when I look in here to grab the snap ring because I'm getting old. Okay. 
there you go. Then there's your cage for your rear planet. This is your rear drum that your reverse band rides on. The band itself doesn't look too bad. Just, you see this little bronze in here? That means there's a little wear on it. But the band's not broken. So obviously that's not our uh, reverse problem. Inside the back of the case, this is your one-way roller assembly that allows that drum to only only turn in, in this direction clockwise. I always use a magnet to pull all the rollers out. There's a roller spring, roller spring. You can see this spring is broken. Is what could be happening here is that spring isn't locking that rear drum. There's your difference in the spring. That could be another broken one or it could be the other half of the first one. And then there's the cage that holds them all. There's a little thrust washer in the bottom that that center uh, spray cup rides on. Sometimes they stick in there, not because anything's wrong with it, just from the, the oil is up against it so we'll wait till we flip the transmission over a lot of times on these c4s the way to determine uh an early from a late is this one is an early it's got a screw in modulator valve where the uh, later ones are pushing with a steel bracket anybody can just replace the parts i always try and figure out why why it happened always pay attention when you pull this out there's going to be a little tip. I've seen a lot of times guys will change this modulator valve. They'll pull the old one out. Oil runs out. The pin falls on the ground. They don't know there's a pin in there. They'll put the new modulator in, and then they wonder why the transmission doesn't work. What does that modulator control? The shift. The shift. Your when. When to shift? Oh, okay. So when it hits, hits the pressure, it shifts. And it controls this valve. And where that valve sits in the case, is incorporated to where the valve body seats to the transmission. Tail stock. Now this is your governor assembly. This governor assembly helps determine when, at what speed and RPM the transmission shifts at. And this is your rear support and the feed tubes come actually through the case from the valve body and then in between these oil rings to feed the governor assembly. This is a little tight fit because these feed tubes are snug in the case. This is what locks your transmission into park. You can see it's splined to right on the, on the output shaft. There's your park crawl. Your linkage actually runs through the case. So when you put it in park, when you're just using it, this little spigot controls the manual valve on the valve body. But when you go all the way forward, this rod goes through the case and engages this park crawl into that gear. These are your forward and direct drums. This one that the band grabs engages in second gear. This is high gear, but this set of friction also gets engaged when you put it in reverse. It's not just the band. So we'll have a peek, see what this friction looks like. And you can see it's not worn out, but it's all scored. See how black it is? A little bit of heat marks on there. So we'll change all those friction and steel plates. Same with these ones, they're all scored up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble these drums, we're gonna take the pistons out, we're gonna reseal them all, fresh band. That's from somebody beating that shit out of it. Huh, I wonder who did that.
But the thing is, is it was slipping when I got it. Well, that's what everybody says. It was like that when I got it. Like from sitting, this it is, wouldn't do it, do this shit, or would that mess no, up? No, not the... from sitting. Okay. So this is the one thing we don't know. I won't know till I take these drums apart. Sometimes when a transmission gets old, yeah, the seals inside get hard. So is what's happening when the piston's trying to engage the friction. Right. You could have a pressure loss. It could be blowing past the seals not wanting to engage the piston right so it's not fully and engaged and it and slips it, yeah it prematurely slips doesn't want to engage so when we pull these pistons out if the seals are rock hard then i know why that. now on this high gear drum which i said it's also engaged in reverse this has a diaphragm style plate to return the piston where this one has uh, a large spring in it this piston is tight in this drum so when this transmission is all assembled those two oil rings is what engages that piston so you always check where those rings ride to make sure there's no wear because that will cause a huge pressure loss we'll give this a little shot of air and we'll see if it if it knocks that piston out. There you go. Seal doesn't feel overly hard, so we'll check the, There's one that's on the inside as well to seal the piston. The one on the outside is a square cut. The one on the inside is uh, is a round seal. Now this is actually gonna be hard for you guys to see if I had the, the new seal in front of me. But you see how this seal isn't perfectly round? See how it's a little flat all the way around? That means it's, it's worn and that could be causing a little bit of a pressure loss. So like we said earlier, this is your front pump. This is the heart of the transmission. If there's a problem with the front pump, you could cause damage. So when we do a rebuild, we always strip the front pump, rebuild it, new bushings, seals, oil rings, but we're gonna knock, it's a two two piece pump. We'll knock it apart and just make sure there isn't any any wear in the, in the pump gears causing us a problem. Always look on the back half. See how this is really nice. There's no signs of wear in here. So we know there's no pressure line. And then of course we'll inspect the gears and they look just great. So this is nice. The torque converter that goes into the front, if there was an issue, I've already bench checked the converter, checked end play in it, it feels good. But if the converter was actually coming apart or tearing up, you would see metal in here or you would see uh, marks from steel going through because when the converter lets go, everything goes through the pump, through the transmission. So this is a good sign, this pump's like new, so. Now we just need to fix it. And then it's gonna be like a nice star wipe, and we'll be putting it back together. <laughs> Ready for the power tour. Exactly. All the parts that are damaged or need to be replaced are easily attainable. So we're gonna order those up, then Joe's gonna put this mess back together, and hopefully I'm gonna be boogieing down the road pretty soon with uh, a transmission that doesn't slip. Here we go. Install <laughs> rigid live. We're back on the C4. Everybody thinks his name's Blackjack. His name's really Stefan. Yep, that's true. But here it's Stiffy. Yeah, only, only at Joe's I'm Stiffy, so you guys don't get any ideas. Good friend of mine went to a place in Toronto where they hand rolls. Cuban cigars. Oh, nice. It's one of the only places in Ontario locked, so hopefully I'll enjoy this. And I don't work with gloves, but I've got some intravenous issues going here right now, so I'm trying to keep my hands clean. As you see, we got everything disassembled, inspected. We ordered all the parts we needed. So we're going to start the assembly on it. It's like building a puzzle. Everything goes together in a certain way for a certain reason. So we've got to put the back section on first, our rear governor support, our parking gear, our park prowl. 
like when we did the GTO training. I always like greasing up our washers. Keeps everything in place during assembly. And obviously it doesn't give it a dry startup. This is a special grease that turns into transmission oil when it gets hot. So this is gonna sit on here. Then when we put our output shaft in, it's gonna keep it centered in a case. Park for all. So that's the guy when you slam it in park, it jams in here. When that linkage comes up, ah. it pushes it into the gear. This is like a, like a return spring. It keeps, uh, it keeps, otherwise it would just float. Yeah, and it can catch every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, you would hear, uh, if this spring was broken or came off, you would hear uh, a ratcheting effect, eh? Is that going to go up there? Yeah, this has got to get locked into the case. Just like that. Okay, so we're going to snug these bolts up. Make sure they're all snug. Now that we have this back piece on, we're going to roll it over. We're going to put our rear band in, our rear drum, our one-way roller. Then we're going to put the output shaft in, and there's a snap ring that goes on the rear hub before we continue with our planetaries. So same deal. I'm going to put a little grease on here to hold her into place. A little bit on a washer. Oh, that looks like an old one. Like the old one that came out of it? Yeah. Yeah. That's still perfect. Oh, fine. it's mint. It's got two locking tabs. The locking tabs sit down into those two recesses in the case. One at 12 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock. There we go. She's locked in. Then this is the cage that holds our one-way rollers and springs. And you can see the way it's notched, it sits in this hub and locks it in. Now this is your, your inner race that your Sprague rides on. This only goes in one way. You see how the splines are cut up? Because I do this shit for a living, I know this goes in like this. Okay, so you see these three little marks, these three little circles? Yeah. You could tell Oh, they ride right up against there. That's from sitting? Yeah. So we'll set this in. Well, now this is in. Now we're going to put our one-way rollers in. We're going to put the rollers in first, then we're going to put the springs in. When we took it apart, we found a couple bad springs in the spray. Okay. So that's why we ordered a new roller kit for it. We're just going to put them in like this, and I'll show you why. If you put the springs in first, you'll never get the rollers in. Now this is called a sprag. Some people call it a one-way clutch. Is what it does. It only allows this drum to turn in one direction. Sometimes you actually have to turn this a little bit just to keep the hub centered to allow you to, to put the rollers in. Then on our sprag, is what I'll actually do is I'll squeeze this together and then I'll slide the spring in. You want to make sure that they're down all the way, that it's it's bottomed out and they sit in those L-shaped brackets on that on that uh, holder that we put in. You always got to watch when you get a new kit because these things are so thin and so small, sometimes they'll be too stacked up. You want to make sure you don't have two together. See how as soon as I roll that, how they loosen up and it lets me put the spring down. I always like making sure that the roller goes on this side with this tip going towards the outside of the case. Because this spring wants to roll. And it's going to stick with the contour of the 
see how we just got that one tip on the outside of that holder so now that they're all in all your rollers and springs are in it's going to keep this inner hub center but before we put the drum in we're going to put the band in because if you don't put the band in sometimes you won't get it in once Later. the drum is in so this would be the reverse band? This, the lining on this band is awesome. This band's like brand new. So yeah, okay. I prefer to use an original OEM band is way better than an aftermarket band. If you look here, where your strut rod goes off of this side servo, the case is very shallow here. On this side where your adjusting nut is, is very long. So you, you know the band's gonna go in this way. Just like that. And and if you did put it in backwards, the band wouldn't sit down into place. It would sit there cocked. Look at me rebuilding transmission. Is what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this strut rod for the adjuster in now because with the drum out we can move the band around and make sure we get this into place properly. Okay, so you can adjust the tightness. Yeah. This is an adjusting nut here to adjust the band. If it's slipping in reverse, you can tighten that potentially. As long as the band's not already smoked. Right. Which nine times out of ten it probably is, right? Yeah. Now is what I like to do is I always prefer to put this servo in now mm -hmm. because I've got everything out of here. And I can see. Yeah, you can adjust it and look I'll, at it. I'll know all my tabs are locked in. I always like putting transmission oil in the servo bore so our rubber's got uh, lubricant. I always need to lube your rubbers. I've been doing this so long I know what everything is. Either you can match up your, your old O-rings. This cover uses a square cut, square cut seal. So what I'll do is I'll put this square cut seal on now, dry because I don't want to lube it up because I don't want it popping off while I'm trying to put it on. The old one was all siliconed up. I had to scrape the surface and sand it. But once I got it on, then I'll actually put a little grease on the outside so when it goes up against the case, it will position itself where it needs to go. There's your servo piston with your return spring. When I took this apart, there was only two bolts on the cover because I think your shifter bolts off to the other side. Yeah. But as what I do is I always put the four bolts in because I want to snug this cover up evenly. Yeah. And then I want to make sure the cover is completely seated for when we go to adjust the band. Do you adjust the band now? I can adjust it on the bench, yeah. Okay. Well, once it's adjusted, if we need to pull the bolts out to change them, there's no problem because the servo will stay in. Just bring this in evenly. This is the strut arm that activates the band from that servo. Little notch in there. And then there's an actual tab on the center of that band to keep this riding square. So we're gonna grab the band. We're gonna move it. We're gonna put the strut rod in. The strut rod is bottomed out against the band. So I know we're locked into our slot. This band isn't adjusted yet. So I should be able to slide this reverse drum right over the band. Give it a little turn and she falls down and it's locked into that center hub. So that one-way clutch it's already grabbed only it. lets this drum turn clockwise. This is our rear hub, which is for the rear planetary. So this is gonna sit right in there. Okay, right now it's touching that drum, but once we get the input shaft and there's a step in here that holds that up. When we freshen up a tranny, there's, besides all your seals and gaskets, there's oil rings, right? 
So these three rings that ride on this governor support seal it so you get your oil passages through there. Some guys try and cheat and reuse the rings. I always, always change them. They're like piston rings, basically. Yeah, they're cast iron. On a C4, they're cast cast iron rings. So they, they do wear out like an oil ring. I can use those on my lawnmower. But if you buy the kit, those usually those will come with it, right? Yes, they do. When you order a master kit, a lot of times if you don't specify what you want, you'll get, they call it a soft kit, which just gives you your paper gaskets and your rubber rings. Right. They won't give you, sometimes they don't give you valve body gaskets, they don't give you front and rear seals, they don't give you your oil rings. There's going to be three rings in that kit that are going to be identical. I never put these on dry. I always dip them in transmission fluid. That way I know there's oil all the way around the ceiling ring. You always want to go right to the bottom and then work your way up. And you want to make sure that you're not overly rough with it because you can break these rings easily. And they don't give you extras in the kit. Then it's the same deal as, as a piston ring. You always want to stagger your grooves. You don't want your grooves to be lined up. Now you gotta remember your uh, rear hub is just floating. So you wanna try and line everything up while you're feeding it in. Just like that. Again, I make it look a little easy because I've been doing this for years, but snap ring that's gonna hold that whole section together. Always make sure that that snap ring is locked into the groove. So like I said, we're working on the, on the rear planet. So that was the rear half of it. Now this is the front half of it. This kit you ordered is a master kit, but what if you need these things too? You have to order them? Separately, yeah. Oh, they're all separate, okay. Yeah. Very rare you have to replace them. And if you do, I've got boxes upstairs with miscellaneous where over the years you bought kits and you use the washer here or washer there. Yeah. Always, Make sure your planetaries feel nice and... There's a pinion in here. Yeah, so there's not too much play. In there's there. a pinion in there, and there's roller bearings in there. Yeah. So you want to go by feel. You want to make sure there's nothing torn up. Not this sloppy. is going to be hard to see, but there's there's thrust washers on each side of that gear. So a lot of times when these planets fail, those washers come apart. This gear set locks into that rear drum that we put in. The trick is to try and keep it square. It helps align. There we go. And then she falls right into place. Okay, and we're gonna grease up our washer. And there's three locking tabs on that that go in these three slots in the in the planetary. Just like that. We wanna join the rear planet with the front planet. How do you do that? With this shell and this sun gear. This is gonna go right in there, just like that. And that's how you get your different ratios from first gear to second gear. And then in high gear, third gear, it's obviously one to one. So Same deal on your planet. You wanna make sure everything feels good. This one runs a Torrington right in the center. If this Torrington goes bad, you gotta change the gear set because you can't change the washer because you can't get it past the gears without taking the gears out. But if this washer goes bad, it usually tears up the planetary. That just disintegrates it? Yeah. Same deal, three locking tabs, three slots in the planet. And then there's your outer cage for your front planet. Just like that. I could have done that after watching this video yeah now this is the drum we took apart the other day that we inspected so on these older forge they used like i showed you they used a square cut seal not a lip seal and that's it there i like using a lot of grease on this seal and i'm going to show you why so you got your square cut on the piston on the inside of the drum uses a uh, round seal. 
it's going to be hard to see, but there's a lip cut. See how that seal fell right in? Because everything's so precise. If that seal was too big, you would never get the piston in. Okay. So I like using a lot of training oil on the inside of this drum where the seals ride on the piston and where the piston rides on the drum. And again, the reason you want to use a lot of grease because when I put this piston in this drum, it's going to look a little crude. Because this piston, it's got to get hammered into the drum. So you want to make sure the piston's nice and square. You want to make sure it goes in evenly. If it had a lip seal on it, the piston's smaller. We use the feeler gauge. We walk the piston in and it falls right in. Right. But not on these. Just hammer it in. There it is. Like we discussed when we took it apart, this one uses a diaphragm style return spring. Okay, so this ring goes into the notch in the piston. So that way there, this diaphragm, every time that piston engages, this diaphragm is going back and forth. It, 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 without this ring in there, it would start tearing it the piston up. <clears throat> so basically I get the snap ring started. This diaphragm has pressure on it right now. So you want to you want to make sure the snap ring is locked into into the drum. Because if the snap ring comes out, you're going to prematurely damage the friction in this drum. On top of that diaphragm that sits on the piston is a beveled pressure plate. Open that up, please. Something I can do. So if you can see the difference between the old clutches and the new clutches, even these ones are, are worn. See the slightly difference in the thickness? Mm -hmm. See the color, the texture? These ones are all scored. Same deal. Soak them in transmission oil. It's hard when the friction gets like that. They're not smoked, but it just gives it a hard time to stay applied. And then of course, and then you got to remember, this is your forward and, and your direct drum. You got to remember the band was smoked on that drum as well. Right. Of course, on your steel plates, they're all notched to fit into the into the drum. So you're gonna go clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, and then your top pressure plate. And it will go on either way because it's it's a machine surface on both sides. I always put them in the same way as I take them out. Now, if that top plate was scored, we could flip it around. Always make sure your friction is free once you build the drum. Okay, now that we got this drum built, we got the washer on the bottom. I try, sometimes it's hard, but I try and get all these clutch plates lined up closely because you've got to work this drum onto that front planet till it drops down all the way till this washer rides on this machine surface. So if you kind of line up the all your tabs first, it makes it a little easier to drop it in. Sometimes these suckers will go in very nice. Sometimes you got to play with them. So basically, see there's three, four, five. One way to tell if it's down all the way is I'll lift it up a little bit. See how solid it is? I know it's bottoming out. Now this front drum 
that the band rides on. It has a spring style retainer inside versus the uh, the waffle style that we used on that drum. So we got to put it in the spring compressor, find the slot in the snap ring. You want to push that down enough to get your snap ring released and then bring it all up. So now you can see you can see how much spring pressure there is. See how high this has come up? Nice having the right tool for it. One thing you always want to pay attention on on these forts, there's a check ball in here, a relief oh, yeah, yeah, on the yeah. piston. And when they put a Ford builds this piston, they put it in there and then they strike it to hold it in there. You always want to make sure that that pissed, that ball hasn't come out of the piston. This drum uses a square cut, not a round o ring. Make sure we're not forgetting anything here. And again, you want to feed this in. You want to make sure you don't roll the seal because it's got to sit square in the groove. You got to really play with this square cut o-ring and make sure that it doesn't roll on you when you're putting it in. On the newer, newer ones, some of these pistons had a lip seal instead of a square cut seal. On the C4s, on the aluminum C4s, it's 64 to 71, 72 to 76, I believe. And a couple of my new changes, like this has a screw in modulator valve, which the early ones had, but this transmission's a 72. Right. And you'll feel it when it's bottomed out. So you know it's in all the way. You'll put your, your spring back on your piston. You got your retainer ring that your snap ring sits in. So the trick is when you're putting this together, sometimes you actually have to try and keep the spring centered on the drum. So when you're compressing it, it feeds in properly. drums are so small, sometimes it's hard. There we go. Now I know I'm started on the drum. I'll get the snap ring positioned. Now I'll finish going down the rest of the way. But like I say, you always want to make sure you get that snap ring locked in all the way. So I feel it's locked in all the way, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my tool back on. I'm just gonna give it a little to verify. Yeah, we're good. Thanks, hey, that fun? Problem, Joe. Thanks for rebuilding my transmission so I can take it on a power tour. Okay, now we'll put the friction in the next drum. Same deal. We're going to dip them in the transmission oil. So we're going to start with a flat plate off against the piston. Clutch, plate, clutch, plate, clutch, plate, clutch. And then the pressure plate on the top. So now we'll put that uh, front drum in. Same deal. You got to get it started. Turn it. Lock all your clutches in. Now once you get it to the bottom, now you're trying to turn everything. So what I'll do is I'll put the input shaft in. 
so I can turn the second drum, the rear drum, and it'll help me drop in. You'll see this front drum has these tabs that lock into this sun gear. So when it when it's down all the way, you know all your friction are engaged in that hub on the front planet. Now when we took it apart, you remember the band was smoked on it. The thing was so crisp, it was standing straight out. So we've got a brand new Borg Warner band here. So same as the friction, we're gonna put it in transmission oil. Two slots. Channel there. Yeah, it helps channel the oil out when the band releases. And when, when you apply the band to, if there's too much oil in there, the band could slip on the drum. Okay. Well, if you see where all the slots are, there's holes in there to help release Okay. To so help it's, release it's more the getting oil. rid of the oil. Getting rid of the oil. Ah, okay. We're going to feed this band in, get it in position. Then we're going to leave it there, and we're going to do our side servo. And this servo is what engages that band, which is your second gear shift. So here we go. Beautiful. Yeah, on a lot of these older trannies, they all used square cut seals. I don't like the way this one fits on there. It feels a little loose. Now this is a little different. This piston is actually going to go into the cover first. Then we're going to put the whole thing in like an assembly. The oil on the surfaces where the oil rings or uh, seals ride inside the bore, inside the cover. And this one uses a gasket rather than a square cut to, to seal it on the outside. Again, I never like putting them on dry. The grease just seems to help make them seal nicer. So you wouldn't want to use RTV or any kind of crap like that? No, right? I don't like using that. Because it's, it's potential you get into the well, transmission. Well, the thing is, if it, yeah, if it gets into the transmission, you're going to cause a problem. Yeah. And again, this gasket, it'll go on four different ways. But you know, there's a feed here. There's a feed hole in the case feed hole in the gasket so you want to line it up on this housing where it belongs just like that again same deal it's got that feed hole so you want to line that up if you look inside there's a little boss that this spring sits around it keeps it center in the case so when I'm feeding this in, I always like to make sure that that spring is going around that boss and not sitting on it. Well, you gotta make sure that you get it started. Because again, you don't wanna nick the rings, right? You always wanna make sure that it stays nice and square. So I'm actually gonna run that in by hand because I wanna feel how it walks in. You know, when you run stuff in with a gun, sometimes you just don't have the feel for it, eh? Yeah. Beautiful. Before we put the pump in and put the pump together, we're gonna put the strut bars on that front band. Those tabs keep the band from sliding on and off of these strut arms, right? There you go. Your band's in place. What about all like the dirt and shit on here? Does it make oh, a difference? It's good. We'll put some ashes in there before we're done. Yeah. Is that your signature move? <laughs> <laughs> Cigar butt in every transmission. <laughs> I used to do that with engines before I put the intake on it. They go like that. Yeah, and watch guys freak out. So last time 
we took the pump apart and we inspected it for wear. And the, the pump is like new. Yep. I'm really happy with it. So I finished taking it apart, took the seal out of it, obviously, put it in a tank and cleaned it up. But before I put the pump back together, I always like putting the new seal in first. It's easier putting it in while the pump's apart. This is, this is a really good practice to do. People, they buy seals. Doesn't matter if you're working on your rear end, your engine, whatever. Something I always do is I'll take this seal and I'll just roll it back enough to make sure that the spring is on the inside. Right. I've seen seals come without the spring in them. Right. Like a defective, if you didn't check it and you yeah. put it in yeah. and it leaked out the front, you wouldn't know why. I always like packing a little grease in there. Just enough around that lip. So that way when I hammer this seal inside the pump, I don't knock that spring out. And of course, you know, on the lip, eh, where the converter writes. Something else that I've always done for years is I always put Loctite on my, on my front seals. Because sometimes there's a lot of pressure in these transmissions. And let's say the seal wasn't made to the proper tolerances. You don't want that seal popping out. Pump gears, they're going to get soaked in oil before they go in. On a Ford, these gears can only go in one way. You can put them in upside down, but then you won't get the converter in because it's notched in the front to give the converter a chance to slide in. When you're talking about the pump, it's two-piece unit. This is the front half of the pump. This is the rear half. We call this a stator. And this goes in the converter. And then, of course, you know, your pump's the heart of your transmission. And then you've got four oil rings here. And then that's what feeds your the drums. Trans. This will only bolt on one way. But, of course, you know, I always look at my oil holes. And I line that up before I set it down. And there's no seal or anything between them? No, it's it's a machine surface. Tight. I have seen pumps that have been warped before in between the two halves. Mm -hmm. And when it gets hot, it'll actually cause a, a pressure loss. Now, stiff mm -hmm. oil rings. Yep, and they like lock together almost. Yeah. They got locks on them. It's kind of neat. There's a difference from early to late. So they sent some extra ones just to make sure you got the right ones for the right transmission. Halfway through the one year, I can't remember, but they made a difference in the stator for on the oil rings. So just for fun, eh? So when you put these on, you want to make sure you lock oil rings they lock on so they're actually like a, a gapless ring again same as the last set you want to stagger them even though they're gapless I always try and rotate on top of this pump stator there's another thrust washer that goes on there that goes against that rear drum that holds the drum down you see these notches in here that's because Two of these fit inside these holes. There's a plug in there that's like an orifice. See the hole in it? You want to make sure you don't put this on the wrong way and, and block that hole. Just like that. Like on that Turbo 400 we did for the GTO, GM uses a gasket and they cut the pump for an O-ring. Right. On these earlier Fords, they only use a gasket. So same deal, we'll get a little grease on it. And again, this gasket will only go on one way. You know, there's a cutout here to match the cutout in the case. So you put it on there. Make sure all your oil holes and bolt holes all line up. 
I always use a Phillips screwdriver to make sure the pump's lined up when I slide it on. So of course I always grab the bottom bolt hole as a reference. Slider into place. Now you want to be gentle with this. You want to make sure all your oil rings interlock in your drum. Sometimes guys will get rough with it and they'll try and force it on and they'll, they'll break an oil ring. And it's down all the way. So what I'll do is I'll get some of my pump bolts started. Make sure all your bolts are going to start. You want to make sure everything feels free. Now again, like we talked about it when we took it apart, was there's early and there's late. Some have separate pump bolts and then another set for the bell housing. Mm -hmm. On this one, the bell housing bolts on with the pump. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna snug up a couple bolts. Before we go any further, we're gonna check and make sure everything turns, which it does. If there was a washer out of place or one of the drums not down all the way, when you draw that pump in, it wouldn't allow everything to turn like this. Everything would lock up? Yeah. Okay, that's it for today. Back to Stiffy C4. When we left off yesterday, we had most of the main body assembled. We still had the tailstock, the valve body. Anyways, when this transmission was probably done the last time, I'm thinking they didn't open up the valve body because when I opened up the valve body, it had still had the original gasket on it. All your valves, everything. This thing was just caked with sediment and, and clutch material and when this is in the transmission, this would be classed as your upper half of the valve body. Upper valve body takes one check ball and it takes a little rubber, I call it a hockey puck. The lower valve body takes two check balls and then you have this little relief valve and spring which goes in the case and then the filter holds it down. Well, the interesting thing I found, besides the valve body being all jammed up and dirty, one of the check balls was missing in this lower half of the valve body. Plus the relief spring and relief valve were installed upside down. It's always interesting to, to find something that wasn't right or is wrong or could have caused a problem. So, uh, I've already cleaned this valve body, soaked it in Varsol, blew it out, made sure all the valves are free in it. Put this valve body back together. They call this the lower half because when you take the pan off, that's what you see. It takes the two check balls. In our kit comes with three new check balls. A lot of times guys cheat and they leave the old check balls in. Well, if you see, there's actually a difference in size because these balls are rubber and from all the heat and age and time, the ball actually gets smaller. The check ball can get so small, I've actually found it lodged in the separator plate. We get our two new check balls in the separator plate. Now these kits, like, I, like we talked about yesterday, they vary, vary in different years. So they give you two gaskets one's different from the other so i always rule of thumb i always match it up to the old one and then 
I'll set it on a separator plate and I'll make sure all our holes are clear. If you got the wrong one, see the holes? See how a bunch of the holes are plugged and the holes aren't in the same spot? This is just like the seals. We always put this in transmission oil. So I always give it a little dip. I'll let it drip off for a minute before we put it in. This valve body's got to go together in a couple different stages. So first we'll put the gasket on. Then our separator plate will go on. Then there's one bolt that holds the plate to the channel. That keeps everything together. Then we take our other half. And again, on some of the kits, they give you instructions so you'll see. But on this channel, you can see this bathtub. That's the only spot that a check wall will go into. Then it's, it's always very important. I always try and find a reference to make sure all the holes are lined up. Now there's three sets, right? You got a set of bolts that go in underneath the filter. You got bolts that go on the outside. You've got two bolts that go in through the back. I won't tighten up any of these bolts until I have them all started. The, the, ones, the ones that hold the filter down, um, obviously you can't tighten them up till you get these tightened up, but I will put a couple of bolts in there to make sure our two halves stay totally aligned. This arm that bolts to the valve body is what rides on your rooster for your manual lever. That's, you know, when you hear the, when you're taking it in and out of gear. I always like putting the factory tag back on. Now, where the filter bolts down, I'll put a couple bolts in here just to make sure everything stays aligned while I tighten up the rest. There's the relief valve and spring we were talking about. That's going to sit inside this passage right there with the valve against the separator plate. A little tab on a filter is what holds it in the place. Just like we did on the front pump seal, I've already greased it on the inside, Loctited it. And again, I always like putting the seal on while it's on the bench. It's a little easier than trying to put it on once it's in the train. Gaskets already greased up. The one tailstock bolt has this bracket that holds the vacuum line to the modulator valve. Just kind of keeps it from flopping around in the vehicle. Modulator valve that slides into the case. Always dip it in the transmission oil. You don't want to put it in dry because you don't want it sticky in the case. Like we talked about when we took it apart, that's the, that's the pin that goes from the modulator into the valve. A lot of times guys, they pull this modulator valve out, they don't realize there's a pin there, they lose it. And again, 72 was the halfway year between they went from the push-in mod to the screw-in mod. This one's screwing, but I won't be able to do the final snug on it until I get it off the rack. Now, the last thing, before I put the valve body in, I like to adjust the bands so I can see everything that's going on. On these early C4s, the adjustment on your front band for second gear is one and three quarter turn. And I'm gonna turn the adjusting screw in until it's snug. If you look in the manual, it probably says like 10 inch pounds or something like that. But I just, I know where it's gotta be just from doing this so long, right? Okay, 
So I got it where I want it. Now I'm going to back it out one and three quarter turn. There's one, one and a half, three quarter right there. If this was a real high performance, a lot of horsepower, you might want to snug it up to one and a half. Make sure your nuts tight. Make sure everything still turns. Give it a little check. Now the reverse band, it goes three turns. And you always want to make sure your locking nut is, is backed off enough because you don't want that nut touching the case and giving you a false reading. So there we go. We're gonna back it off three turns. One, two, three. Tighten up the nut. Beautiful. On these sports, when you're putting the valve body in, there's your manual valve for each gear. So when you're moving your linkage, it's pulling this valve in and out. Then this little arm pushes on this pressure valve. That's for your passing gear. So it's very critical. Is what I'll do sometimes is I'll line this up, give myself like a happy medium. So when I'm setting the valve body in, I make sure that I'm catching the valves. I'm gonna pull this arm back off here. just so it'll let me move everything a little easier. So if you look, if you look from the side, you can see that I am in the manual valve. And if you look in between the valve body and the case down in here, you can see the valve is moving. This, this arm that has the passing gear lever, it's gotta fit inside that valve body. Just, you'll know when you got it in place Okay, that valve is spring loaded. So I know I've got it in position. Our manual valve is still correct. Get all the bolts started by hand before you snug any up. There you go, there's Stiffy C4. Put the pan on and we're ready to go. Now, one thing, when we took this pan off, there was no gasket on it. Somebody siliconed the shit out of it. They had the pan all over tightened, all the pan rails were like that. So once I got all the silicone off, I put it on a bench, straightened the pan out best I could. We're obviously gonna use a new gasket. But because this pan is old and uh, distorted a little bit, I will use a little film of silicone before I put the new gasket on it. But other than that, this bad boy is ready to rock and roll. I appreciate you guys tuning in and putting up with me and thank you.